This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers, retirees, students, and other not so nefarious characters who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will be installing a USB port to be used as a universal charger. I came across this particular USB socket and liked it better than the one I originally planned to use. So I bought it, downloaded the specifications for it from the manufacturer, and transcribed the measurements to my panel diagram. It's then a matter of uh, printing off the panel diagram and taping it to the enclosure's top panel to be used as a template. I then need to center punch the markers on the template. Two holes for the mounting screws and one for the center of the rectangle. And I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out the rectangle at the same time leaving scratches on the enclosure panel to mark the boundaries of the rectangle. Don't want to drill beyond the boundaries. Got to stay within the lines. It'd be nice if I could find a rectangular drill bit for the center rectangle, but I can't. I'm using a body drill for a 440 screw, which is what the uh, USB port is tapped for. It's number 33 gauge. Drilling each of these screws. The screws have to be fairly accurately drilled. The rectangle, not so much. Using the same drill bit for the rectangle, and now we use a universal bit to drill out as much material from the rectangle as we can, and use a file to get rid of the remaining material from inside the rectangle. Now, you will notice that I am putting some pressure on the backstroke of these files, and one should not do that. It, the, the files cut on the forward stroke and shouldn't be used as a saw. So, in general, do what I say rather than what I'm doing here. In, uh, in fairness, the, the aluminum is relatively soft metal, and the chances of doing damage to the file are not all that great. This file has been around almost as long as I have been. We're now uh, squaring off the uh, rectangle, working on the edges first, and now I'm uh, still working on the edges. We want to get, as get rid of as much material as we can before proceeding to a smaller file. Now we're looking at getting rid of some of the material near the corners. And one has to be delicate in this operation. Now I'm moving to a 6-inch file from the original 10-inch. And this is a 6-inch flat file. I have much more control when using it. Before using this or any file, I want to use the wire brush and clean it out, both before and after. And this is a little bit more easy to use with a degree of precision required to uh, square off the remaining material uh, inside the rectangle. I'm only showing about five minutes of this uh, filing. If you're playing along at home, count on ten times that amount of time to do this sort of thing. It would be nice to have a milling machine or maybe to use a drill press as a mill, but I am in a New York City apartment and the neighbors would probably not take kindly to my milling machine. I got it close enough to a rectangle and now I'm taking the uh, USB port and I want to mark the number one pin which is the 
positive plus 5 volts. Pin 1 is plus 5 volts and uh, pin 4 is uh, corresponding negative. Now what I'm doing, going to do is to take wires which I need to connect both plus 5 and uh, minus corresponding minus. I'm applying some liquid flux and just tinning the, the ends of the wire. It's going to make the whole soldering operation a lot easier. I need to solder these wires to pins 1 and 4. Now, pins 2 and 3 are data plus and data minus on the USB port. And for a universal charger, which is what I'm trying to do here, the both of those pins need to be shorted to one another. Now, before I do any kind of shorting, again, I'm going to try to tin the pins here. Apply some liquid flux. Again, prefer the liquid to everything except printed circuit cards, where a pen is, is better. We're heating the down, the underside, and applying solder to the top side. That pool of solder on the soldering iron uh, permits you to transfer heat a lot more easily. Now let's, let me take care of the shorting of pins 2 and 3. Shorting these pins tells whatever is connected to the USB port that this is indeed a universal charger and whatever device is connected can draw power uh, at its, uh, whenever it wants to. It does not need to negotiate. And we'll try to crimp this. Again, some more flux. And we're going to solder the scrap wire to pins 2 and 3, which are now shorted together as required. Now, I'm going to connect the black wire, which I had previously tinned, to pin 4. Apply some solder to the back side. And uh, the soldering operation is quite a bit easier when both the pin and the wire have been uh, tinned previously. And now we're going to connect the red wire to pin 4 of the USB port. This is a USB 2 Series A port. Okay, now at this point I've been kind of worrying about wires getting a little too close and soldering getting a little too close and the next thing I do is, is test. And I'll test it at least twice, once at this point and once after everything is connected and installed in, in the enclosure. Now, I'm just using this DMM uh, to test the continuity. The tip of the red wire should be contiguous with pin 1 and with no other pins. The tip of the black wire should have continuity with pin 4 and no other pins. And I should see uh, pins 2 and 3 shorted together, con contiguous with each other and to nothing else. And none of these pins should be shorted to the outside case. And then having passed that, I'll put some heat shrinkable tubing in. Move that close. My concern is uh, when these wires move around, uh, I'm concerned about uh, shorting it. In this case, shorting pin 4 to pin 3. I'm using a hot gun, sometimes called a a surface mount rework station and now for this particular wire I'm uh, twisting the stripped end and doubling it up putting a larger piece of 
heat shrinking a heat shrink on and then a uh, a ring terminal I use a standard crimping tool for this this wire is uh, number 18 it's uh, not very thick and the crimp uh, uh, of these things is relatively easy they do make crimping tools with a higher mechanical leverage for larger wire sizes I don't think it's necessary for this stuff and now I've got both wires crimped to uh, the solderless connections except that I don't trust these connections I found that they tend to loosen up for whatever reason over a period of years and since I never ever want to have to go back over this I'm going to uh, solder these as well apply some flux and then some solder heating the back of the terminal with a soldering iron and applying the solder to the forward portion of it and melting the solder down into the, the wire to terminal joint and we're going to do that again for the black uh, negative wire and after applying solder I'm using solder on the soldering iron to facilitate heat transfer this solder is not being used to make the solder junction and shouldn't be used for, so for that. Now, uh, using this uh, hot air surface remount reworking station, whatever it's called, a hot air gun. Uh, one needs to be careful using this as, as one uses a soldering iron, and the temperatures are uh, essentially the same. That hot air is. Uh, well, in this case, it's about 150 degrees centigrade, not Celsius. Uh, but it can go uh, way up to three or 400 degrees and uh, should be treated with care. And finally, the enclosure top panel with a USB port installed along with the binding posts. In this video, we center punched marks for the USB socket's mounting holes, then scribed the outline of the USB rectangular cutout, drilled holes from the center punched marks, and squared off the rectangular opening, shorted the USB data pins and attached wire leads to the power pins, then crimped and soldered ring terminals to the wires and finally tested the USB pin continuity. In the next video, we will be installing solderless power distribution strips. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos or voice your opinion on related matters then leave a YouTube comment if you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form such as high-res graphics files in different formats lists of references uh, go to the corresponding website until the next time Good day.